What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone 3 in Kappa Mode. So, guys, we are still on the path of trying to make our chaotic thingies. What are they called? These guys, the chaotic chaos catalysts. Yeah, so we can make our chaos ingots so we can get to the everlasting guilty pool. And these chaos ingots are used for other things. Now, one of the well, I guess the first thing that's on our list here is the Naga scale. And I was trying to think. Like, how are we going to farm this? It's been a while since I even thought about farming a mob like this. What, are we going to have to go and kill a whole bunch of Nagas? Mm -mm. Nope, that's not what we're going to do. It actually occurred to me uh, that we have these Woot Farms, and I am almost positive that we can use the Woot Farm to farm Naga Scales. Yeah, we haven't looked at these for quite some time. I think this one right here is doing Big Brother. Is that what it was? Yeah, Big Brother. This one over here, I don't remember what this one was set for. And currently this is turned off. Um, but yeah, it's been quite some time since we last used these things. Well, I guess this one's still running, but I guess it's been a long time since we last messed with this stuff. So I guess what we are going to do to start off this episode is we're going to try and program a new factory heart. For the Naga. So if we look at the Woot mod, there is these Ender Shards that are unprogrammed. You gotta smack them on the mob and then kill it while holding it or have it on your hotbar or whatever. Uh, so Ender Shard. Yeah, we have a few of these left over from before. And I don't know, maybe we want more than one Woot farm so we can have like these scales coming in faster. I don't even know if there's a way to see like how much a Woot farm for a Naga even produces. Because I don't think any of these things say. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it might be the one's too slow. Maybe three is going to be more than enough. It's not like these under shards are expensive. Like, we can make those all day long. It's just, let's, let's just make more than one, I guess. All right, so let's go to the Twilight Forest. And let's go find ourselves a Naga. Uh, we have to right click it or I guess punch it with the ender shards. I guess I'll put those on my bar so I don't forget. Uh, we have to punch it with those so we program it and then we kill the Naga. Uh, now I know there's some Nagas around here somewhere. I guess this might be the closest one. Uh, let me do... Where am I at? Yeah, I'm right here. So we need to go to the east. The east, north, east. So south, east, this way. Yeah, so we should find a Naga. Is this really that close? Or is this one we've already done? Well, this is definitely a Naga pit. But I'm not seeing a Naga in it. So maybe I've killed this one. Oh, yeah, these pillars are deleted, aren't they? All right, so back to the map. Um, I know I keep passing a Naga. Well, I guess there's a few more down here. All right, well, let me go find one of these that still are alive. All right, so the very first one that I came to to the south has a Naga in it. I think this is one that I've activated when I was underground mining a long time ago. I remember when we were mining here in the twilight anyway, I kept seeing a Naga on the thing. Uh, but anyway, let's go over here and see if we can do this. So I programmed it. Okay, so yeah, Naga on that one. So let's do the same thing on these others. There's that one and... Hey, come back here. There it is. Okay, so I should be able to, whoa, this thing's going fast. I was going to say, I should be able to one-shot it with this bow. Or can you not, can you not bow and arrow these guys? All right, well, we'll just do it this way. You die now. Oh, so that only activates one of them. Okay, well, you know what? That's like super easy and the other ones are already set. I'm just going to go over and find a few more Nagas. And then we'll activate the other two. All right, so some things that I learned. If you have three of these on your person uh, and you kill another monster, it'll always try and fully program the first one that it finds. It doesn't even look for other ones. So I had to put the other shards in uh, my ender pouch, and then I ended up killing four of the Nagas in order to program all three of those. I was like, oh no, after the first or the second one, and nothing happened. But we ended up getting 37 Naga scales, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we're going to make some factory hearts here. So if I remember correctly, you have to put a magma block with a Stygian anvil on top. We then have to put a core die. Oh, you know what? I don't have the hammer. Uh, we need the yeah, hammer. All right, turn my magnet off. And then 
Let's move some things on the bar. So we need one of each of these on there and then we smack it with the hammer. So this, 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 that. No matching recipe. We're trying to make a heart core. So the iron block, the iron, pl oh, you know what? It's not the factory base. My mistake is this thing. Try that again. This, this, this. There it is. Okay. I knew I could do it. Whoop, I did too many items. All right. This, 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 that. And one more time. Very good. Awesome. So there's our heart core. So we need factory base plus the heart cores makes the factory heart. And then I can't remember how you program that, but let's just make the hearts. I don't know if you just craft it with the shard or whatever. Uh, let's put these things back in the right spot here. Okay, so we do a factory heart plus one of those, or do I have to do that on, on this guy? Now I can't remember. Um, let's try, I should probably just do this off camera, but I think it was this, right? No. Or do I do the shard on there and then this and then hit it with the hammer? I'm gonna try this real quick. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna do it off camera. No matching recipe. Okay, let me go figure out what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, reading does help sometimes. I definitely was doing that wrong. Um, we're not putting it in the factory hard. We're putting it into a factory core. Like if we go in here and we do uses on this thing and we click this, we can see that we need a controller core plus the factory base and the ender shard um, that's sitting on the anvil, or I guess where I clicked on there, right? And that will turn into the factory controller. I was making factory hearts. Now, I do believe we need the factory hearts anyway, but I was <laughs> making the wrong part. Anyway, so controller cores, which we now have, so I can get this off here, and then we put this down here, right? Okay, let me do this and this. So it's one of each of those. Doot, do oh, too many. Gotta undo those. Doot, doot, doot. Right? So there we go. That's a tier three, and that's a Naga. Well, I don't know if we need three of these, like I said, but we have three of them, and they're not expensive at this point in the game, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it this way. And like I so. So there we go. There is, why does that not stack? What? They're, they're the same. They're, they're the same. Why don't they stick? <laughs> I don't get it. The four NBT tags. I don't know. Maybe there's some difference. Oh, you know what? I did um, program one of those twice, right? So maybe that's the different one that had that was like reprogrammed. I don't know if that makes this any different, though. Well, I don't know. Anyway, we do have a tier three controller set up right here. So I think the only thing we have to do is re actually, yeah, we just place the factory controller right in the center is all we do. All right, let's place a factory controller right in the center. And does that make this thing work? All right, well, this thing's just working. So it looks like we're gonna make one Naga scale every, every spawning attempt, which is fine. Um, I think I have to do something with these other items here because I'm pretty sure we don't have a filter that will get rid of those. Uh, all of this stuff, if I remember correctly, should end up downstairs where our, our mob spawning stuff was. Let's head down here real quick and we'll take a look. Yeah, I'm not seeing it down here, so it might be that I set up a chest underneath that one. Okay, so all of our stuff is here. Oh, actually... It says we have 14 and we've only spawned in twice, so apparently we're getting seven at a time. That might be because of the upgrades that we have on this thing. Well, I mean, not quite seven, but uh, that's not bad. All right, so I think maybe only one of those is what we're gonna need. All right, well, I guess we don't need the other two and that's fine. Yeah, we'll just let this thing do what it does. I will probably... Hmm. Yeah, I might just set up a filter here and apply it under just six things. So we like delete everything else and put the Naga skills in AE. I think I might set something like that up specifically for this. Well, anyway, let me go ahead and do that and we'll be back. All right, just a very, very simple item filtering. So I left the chest that we were receiving the items exactly the same, right? No change there. We're just using an item conduit extract only. And then we are filtering the outputs here. 
So I set this one to a higher priority, but that doesn't really matter to be honest. Uh, we just have an item filter, white listing, yellow hearts, and Naga skills. And then on this side, we have an item, an item filter, black listing, yellow hearts, and Naga skills. So everything else is going into this trash chest. If we need anything, we can come in here and grab it, but I doubt we will. Anyway, I think the trash chest is just a nicer overall thing, just so you have the ability to grab something and it's not just gone forever as soon as it enters the thing. So yeah, very, very simple setup here. And now if we take a look at our Naga skills, we have 253 of them and they're going up about seven ish at a time. I guess I could add in uh, a, a speed upgrade here. What is that called? Uh, upgrade the conduit. I think it's just extract speed upgrade, right? We could do that. Not really necessary, but it doesn't hurt either. That way we just uh, go up. <laughs> The amount of Naga skills that we get at a time, yeah, and it just doesn't waste time like extracting four at a time, I think is what it does. Well, anyway, uh, so we are set now on Naga skills, so that is another item that we can take off our list. So next up, we have, hmm, I think we're going to tackle these things, the Galacticraft stuff. I need to make a bunch of the circuit fabricators. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to handle this. This is something that I'm going to have to take a look at. I need to figure out like how many of these we need and maybe set up multiple circuit fabricators per. Well, anyway, give me a few moments here. I'm going to try and figure this portion out and we'll be right back. All right, guys. Well, there are eight different wafers we need to make. So I figured we'd do four machines per wafer. Yeah. These machines are kind of weird. We've seen this before. You can only put in power from the left hand side of the block on this little section, and you can only extract items from the bottom of the block. So trying to compact them like this. Yeah, it's a little difficult without actually additions, but we have actually additions in this mod pack. So I am going through and using our phantom connectors here to connect uh, these circuit fabricators to two different sets of phantom faces. Yeah, so we have them powered up down here Well, uh, just half of them anyway, I'm still in the process of doing this But yeah, once we get this conduit power it will be able to power these phantom energy faces Which will be attached to all of the different circuit fabricators up there and we are providing power to the one side now It is kind of interesting though that it does keep the certain side you can't power from another side uh, Let me do this real quick. I have too many things in my inventory in a correct order. It's hard for me to do this in the right way. But anyway, we should only be able to power from that side. So if I'm right clicking here, that doesn't go there, that doesn't go there, doesn't go there. But if I do it on this side, or do I, oh, maybe I have to shift click it. Hold on a second. I was only just right clicking when let me do that. Try this again. Uh, This thing, shift right click. Yeah, so shift right click doesn't work on any of these faces, but if I shift right click right here, it will go on there. Yeah, so it keeps the sightedness even through the phantom faces, which I guess makes sense. Um, but yeah, so we have to have these turned like slightly differently and then these were just laying flat underneath. I just need to get some item conduits underneath these guys, have that all go into uh, interface like we normally do, and then get a uh, power source attached to these conduits so we can provide all of those power. But the hardest part of this is going through and doing all the phantom connectors, yep. So anyway, I just gotta go through and shift right click onto each one of these and make sure all of our phantom things are connected properly. Uh, so this one isn't connected. This, this, that, and there we go. So half of them are now done. I uh, just need to get this conduit replaced here. So I'm gonna do the rest of these off camera. Uh, but yeah, pretty much it should be straightforward. We're just gonna have to put an interface on the back of each of these. We'll use cable interfaces and then we can separate them using cable anchors or whatever or just do like lime green, lime green or whatever so the cables don't connect similar to how we did it over here. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and we'll be right back. Well, all right. Well, I haven't tested this yet, but I'm pretty sure this is going to work. So each column has a its own recipe. So blue gym wafers are in each one of these mm -hmm. and then same thing for this one we have the red gem and then the titanium and carbon now i was noticing this one right here is advanced wafers and this only produces one at a time 
And I think, I think all of these other ones produce three at a time. So it might make sense for me to go through and add like advanced wafer recipes into some of these other ones so they can like do that as well because they'll make their own three times faster, right? And then when they're done, well, this is gonna take three times longer. So if we reuse some of these machines or I could just add in, I guess, two more sets specifically for the advanced wafer, I don't know. But anyway, we got 32 machines here ready to go. Uh, I haven't tested this yet, and then I also know way over here, our original stuff, we have these, and I didn't take a look at which ones we have duplicates of. So carbon, or basic wafer, for sure, we don't need that here anymore, so we can get rid of that. Advanced wafer, we don't need that anymore. Well, what did I just do? Did I get rid of something else? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, advanced wafer, yeah, so that's not there anymore. Uh, diamond wafer? Okay. White gem wafer. I don't know if we did all of these. I didn't actually look. Red gem. Okay, so red gem we don't need anymore. Uh, titanium. Very good. And carbon. Oh yeah, look at that. So the only one we haven't made yet is the blue gem wafer. Interesting. So this whole setup, I guess we can get rid of. Oh, and I didn't even realize this before, but that's where one of our specter coils are. <laughs> I thought I'd gotten rid of all of them, I guess. That's a sneaky one that got past me. So blue gem wafers do require blue gems, which requires us to get Neptune blue gem ore. I don't think we have blue gem. We have blue diamond. Kepler. Well, I mean, the blue gems have EMC, so we should be able to come over here and do this, right? So let's grab our tome. This. That. Uh, blue gem. One of those. For a stack, I guess, it works just fine. We'll unlearn the book, we'll just learn these guys. So now we have all of those, awesome. Okay, so now that we have that taken care of, blue gems, yeah. So let's try making, um, well they make three at a time, we have four machines, so let's make 12 of these. I'm kinda curious to see if all four of those machines kick on at the same time, they should. I don't remember which one's which. Uh oh, is it only using one machine? Okay, so that one's going down. Oh no, they all went at the same time. Awesome. So it automatically like does all of them at once. So let's try the red gem, make sure that works. We have 12 of those. Red gem. So I want to make 12 of those as well. So that's going. Oh, this one isn't. There's two in this one for some reason. Weird. Why does it do it that way? I don't know. Because the patterns are all in here. It should all be the same. Hmm. Not sure why I didn't use one of every machine and it put two in this one and two in the bottom one. That doesn't make sense to me. But I guess if we're queuing up a whole lot of them, maybe it'll work. Maybe. Let's see here. How can we fix this? I guess if we put in enough silicon into each one of these so it can only fit one recipe in there and like we have two stacks of 64, maybe that'll work. What's this next one? Let's try it on this one. So this one over here is titanium wafers. Let's grab some more silicon. Uh, that should be enough. No, I need more than that. Two more stacks. Okay, so silicon. Goes into here. I'm going to remove two in each one of these so it can fit one recipe only. And that way it should use all of the machines, right? It won't queue up extras, but it'll make sure that all four machines are running at the same time. And this was the titanium. Okay, so let's try making titanium. So we have 15 in here. I'm going to remove those. We want to make 12. All right, start that up. So that's doing one, 64, 64, that's doing one. Okay, I think that's how we have to do it because each one of these recipes puts in two silicon. Uh, all right, yeah, we can do it this way. That'll be just fine. That'll ensure that all the machines work and we're making them as fast as possible. All right, so I'll just have to fill up all these machines to a stack plus 62 each. And then I think we should be good to go, but I will go through and test the rest of these and make sure I didn't make a mistake here and that everything works correctly, we'll be back, guys. 
All right, so after giving it a little bit of thought, I have decided that the bottom row down here is gonna be dedicated to the advanced wafers, and then the original three that we had here form two. So we can do 11 at a time of the advanced and then nine at a time of all of the other ones, right? So if I come in here and say make 11 of these, and then we do this, we can see it's crafting 11 right now. So each one of these are all doing the advanced wafers. And that way it's gonna make it a little bit more even for the amount of different wafers that we're making at a time. Uh, we're making slightly more of the advanced than we are of the other ones. Like I said, it's 11, and then it's only nine of each of these others, but I think that's better than only three and 12, right? Yeah, it gets us a little bit closer to where we need to be if we need all of these different wafers at the same time, at least the same amount of them, which we will for these Chaos Catalysts, right? So each one of these requires one of each of these different wafers. Okay, I think that makes sense to me. So now that we got that under control, there's just a few items remaining here that we need to take care of. Nocturnal Powder, I'm not actually sure if there's a way to auto-craft this. This has to be done on the Luminous Crafting Table. Um, and we can craft up batches at a time, but I don't know if there is a way to, like, auto-craft this. I mean, it's not that expensive, right? So it's coal, coal, uh, black dye, uh, ink sacks, whatever, lapis, and then illumination powder, which is another one. You get 16 per recipe with this, and all of this is EMCable. So if I put in four stacks of glowstone and aquamarine, we're going to get like a stupid amount of that, which, of course, we're going to do right now because I want to. <laughs> uh, what was it? It was uh, glowstone and the aquamarine. Yeah, let's see, can we do like, can we do 64 of those? I'm actually kind of interested. I would like to see this. Yeah, I think this is something we can just craft up in bulk, right? It's not something that we really need to, to auto craft. Where is the, my wand, this thing, all right. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of stuff. Okay, so I crafted all those up, no problem. It's a lot of illumination powder. And then if we want to turn that into the nocturnal powder again, so ink, coal, coal, lapis. So ink, one, two, coal, one, two, three, four, lapis, one, two. Okay, so we should be able to do that. Can I shift click that in here? Oh, sweet, I can. And we get four for each one of these. Yeah, that's a lot of nocturnal powder that we're about to get in our inventory, which is awesome. Then I'll do it again. Yeah, this bar staying full. That's awesome. Okay, so I guess we'll just do it this way. I'll just pre-craft up a bunch of the nocturnal powder. It's not a big deal, and it crafts kind of quickly anyway. So yeah, let me go ahead and turn all this illumina illumination powder into the nocturnal powder, and then we'll remove that from our list. All right, so I was just taking a look now at our Naga scales. How many we've collected? We're up to 3,080. How many of these are we going to need? I don't know, but yeah, that's way better than going and killing that many Nagas, right? Uh, so the Nagas are doing pretty good. The uh, Nocturnal Powder, 4,096 of it after we completed all of that stuff that we did earlier. So that's really good. So we are in a pretty good position here, I would say, to uh, start making these Kiosk Catalysts after we get these last three items done. But I think we're going to hold off on doing those until next episode. We'll get those knocked out, and then we'll figure out if we have everything set up to start making those chaos, what are these called? Chaos catalysts automatically? Yeah, that's gonna be pretty awesome. If we could set up another one of those ultimate crafting tables and just say craft one and everything just works. We'll have to see if we can make that happen next episode. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.